2016 is coming to an end, and uh, yeah, whilst I don't think it's been the worst year ever, I mean, there's probably a huge list of worst years ever, it's been one of those years that, if I was to do a year in review, it would be, everything was just fucking weird, so let's just talk about video games. That's, that's pretty much what this is. This is just me talking about video games. And whilst this year hasn't been the best year for video games, we've had major disappointments, um, delays upon delays upon delays, and compared to what 2017 looks like, this year pales in comparison, but I still feel there was some great games from this year, some, some small little gems in what essentially was a sort of mediocre field. I, I, I can't really call it shit because this year hasn't been shit for games. It's just sort of been a field where cows graze. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I've been doing this sort of uh, end of the year list thing for three years now. Um, link in the description to those to those previous lists. Um, they're all blog forms. This is the first time I've ever done it in a video form, which is exciting. And maybe I'll do it again next year. Who knows? But this is a sort of end of the year thing where I give my sort of personal recommendations. Anyway, the rules. They'll be in the description below, but it's just a quick summary. Only um, full version uh, non-demo games will be included in this list from this year. So no early access games, no demos as I stated. And no DLC, so, um, because otherwise Rocket League would probably become number one with that um, rumble, whatever it's called. Uh, the second rule is that remixes and remakes are eligible for this list, as well as games ported over to new platforms this year. So, if, say a game from last year was ported over to the PC this year, then it will be the PC version that counts. However, to um, make this fair, any games I've talked about in previous year's list will not be included. So, um, Prison Architect for the PS4 and Danganronpa for the PC not on this list. No, I know, not putting a Danganronpa game on this list surprises me as well. Uh, the third rule is that I had to have played the game in order to actually um, put it on the list, but I had to have played it to a certain length that I feel I can actually give a full full um, view of it, full, like if I can actually give a full review of it, then I could put it on this list. So there are some games I haven't played, like Dark Souls 3, and there are some games I haven't played enough of for me to fully feel right putting it on the list. The fourth one, of course, the fourth rule uh, is that this list is not set in stone. Uh, there is a possibility that I will play these other games and I'll be like, oh my god, but I'm not going to sort of make a follow-up video for this. This is sort of my personal recommendations as of just before Christmas so that maybe you can go out and get these games just before Christmas, despite the fact this was meant to be a few days earlier, but now by the time you're watching this, it's probably Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, I don't know. And the final uh, rule is, this is opinions, 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 opinions. If you don't like the fact that these games are on this list um, and you don't like my opinion, uh, one solution, drink bleach. That certainly helps. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> downward spiral. That's, 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 that's my, that's my, yeah, uh, downward spiral. Anyway, the honourable mentions. The games that just didn't make it to the list, but I feel I should, um, mention them anyway. Stardew Valley, a very cutesy little farming type game. I just feel I need to play it a bit more for me to fully, uh, accept putting on the list. A uh, Watch Dogs 2, a good Watch Dogs game. I never thought we'd ever see the day, but again, I feel I need to play it a bit more. Um, a Severed, a PlayStation Vita game, which is very, very good, has actually utilizes the touch screen, sort of like how Fruit Ninja does, but you have these bosses and battles. It is a very short game, and you can platinum it in one go, so it is not really much re replay value. Oxen Free, a very, very interesting thriller where it does feel like that. Like what you say matters throughout the game, and, and actually changes the way it ends. I didn't like New Game Plus. It did something that really, sort of, um, I felt was ruined the experience. And Enter the Gungeon, a fun-ish sort of roguelike um, game, but just not as good as the other roguelike games I've played. It's just not. It doesn't have that charm that the others have. It just feels like a, another roguelike shooter game and sort of stuff like that. Right then, honorable mentions over, let's go in with number 15. The Deadly Tower of Monsters. This is a small love letter to the sci-fi monster B-movies of old and it, it even shows. Um, I mean this is a game that was under the radar from everyone until it came on PS Plus for November and then everyone started playing it and yeah, it's, it's, it's actually surprisingly good. 
even stuff like the small details where there's one one of the first bosses you get actually moves in a very janky stop motion way and i love the sort of small details like that i mean this game is small but it has so much to it even like sort of um the weapons and abilities uh have this huge amount of levels up that you get you can level up your weapon to to get like a tentacle um sword which sounds weird or tentacle whip sounds weird even though that the game story lasts for about three hours so they've put in a lot in for what is essentially a small package but the best thing about this game the best thing is the director's commentary it plays throughout the entire game and it's just uh, the funniest thing I've heard this year, so yeah, Deadly Towers and Monsters, 15th. Number 14, Crypt of the Necrodancer, PS4 and Vita Edition. I want to say this is an apology to Crypt of the Necrodancer because I played the PC version last year and I thought it was absolutely fantastic, but I only played it after I made the list, so I couldn't really put it in. I didn't want to make a follow-up, so it was pretty much left out. Um, but... It came out on PS4 and PS Vita this year, so it's on this list. A bit lower than what it would have been last year, but hey, it's on this list. And it is better with a controller as well. I, I, I'm actually surprised that, because um, I'm sort of with the um, keyboard, you have to press certain um, combo things or whatever to actually get a bomb. But this, you have you just press a button and it's there. So yeah, it is better with a controller. And everything that you do, the whole the whole gimmick of the game is everything that you is that you do when or everything that the enemy does is done through the rhythm of the beat. So everything is done with the beat of the music. So it does lead to some strategy. Like some enemies have a certain pattern with the beat, and you have to figure out what to do and what's great about it is that you can actually put in your own music and the music and the um, game will respond to that music but it, but it, I don't because the soundtrack is already so amazing I mean I, I think you can only do the soundtrack thing for the PC version get the PC version anyway but I also recommend the PS4 and Vita edition because even without having to import your own music the soundtrack is just phenomenal it, it's just phenomenal number 13 cluster truck Sometimes the simplest of ideas make for the best games, and Cluster Trek is one of those simple ideas, sort of like what Race to Sun was, except for this, it's sort of the floor is lava, except the platforms are constantly moving because of all fucking trucks, and so you have to jump from truck to truck to try and get to the finish. I mean, you could just stay on one truck and hope that truck gets to the end, but there's all these obstacles and these, these constant changing areas, including a forest level, a frozen world, and a laser level, which proves that the person who made those levels was never loved as a child. So even then, you, you can't just stay on this one platform because you have to keep moving to the next platform. And you can get, and you even have this sort of thing where you can get the best time and get more points. And you're, so you're constantly thinking about, should I stay here or should I keep moving and try? It does lead to some actually interesting strategy. I haven't finished it yet. I've only on the last level because the last level, well, it's something. I can tell you that. Number 12. Inside. A game rather hard to describe I've put in my notes, but I'll try my best. I mean, this is the sort of... This is by Grave by Played It, who also made Limbo, and I haven't played Limbo, but it seems that this um, company Played It makes for very dark, um, but also thought-provoking games, and this is one of those games. With some major puzzles having you... Uh, well, there's one, the one puzzle has you having to, go, having to go back and forth throughout the game to get a, a different ending, and one I haven't actually gotten yet, but it's sort of that... Because it's actually quite difficult to fight to know where they are, but it's that one big puzzle that leads to the to this special ending as I said but even the smaller puzzles the smaller puzzles keep engaged there's one puzzle that left me um going around it for like minutes despite the fact it was because you had to go back and forth and back and forth that's how this that's how it sort of is but it, and it's all done for this chilling and dark atmosphere which is possibly um a, a, has some meaning which I could go into but I'm not really that intelligent so I'm not really going to go into it for this and whilst the the ending that you get if you don't solve this major puzzle is unintentionally hilarious, I feel it it, it got the, it was um, trying to be something, but I just couldn't get it. It was an inten unintentionally funny as hell. It was still very memorable. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's inside for you. Number eleven, unravel. EA and Indy seems to sound like they go as together as well as Piers Morgan and anything of any intelligence. But this, surprisingly, was very good. It's a very adorable small game that um, 
it's, it has this very cutesy little character that doesn't even talk, uh, but you follow him out, and it's it's so adorable. He is so adorable. I think it was, what's his name? Yanni. That's it. Yanni. I was worried that this game was going to be nothing more than a sightseeing, sort of uh, not really do anything thing. It's a sort of, oh, here's this, and you can, ooh, memories and all that. But there was actually some puzzles, which, for, and some of which actually did stump me for a little while. There was moments where I had to turn off the game and actually think about what was not on the game before coming back, seeing a way through, and it's sort of... It does get quite difficult the harder the, the more the levels go. There were some um, some situations where I was surprised how difficult they were. And the best thing about it is the is the rope mechanics are so good. Probably Spider-Man two levels of good. So yeah, this is pretty much the the next best Spider-Man game. That sounds weird. Number ten, Doom. Doom is very much unapologetic, and I'm glad it is. It is one of those games that just, you go in with a gun, and you just shoot everything that fucking moves, and it is glorious. I am not a big fan of these sort of games, but god damn it, I, I enjoy Doom so fucking much. And there is a story, and it is a good story, but the thing is, you can be as uninterested in the story as the main character of the game is. And you can tell the main character, he doesn't talk, you don't see his face, but you can tell he doesn't give a shit what's going on. It's like, oh, no, we have this sort of conflict. And he's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Where's the fucking demons? I want to blow their fucking brains out. That's what I do. I don't care about what you got to do. I'll do what you got to do, but I, but I don't care. And that is what's, what's so great about Doom. It's just sort of that, it's that sort of game where it, it, does, it, it, it knows what it is. And it doesn't care if it offends people. And I fucking love games that do stuff like that. And I fucking love Doom. Number 9. Mysterious Chronicles One Way Heroics. God damn Spike Turnsoft. Trust them to make a game that I wouldn't give two shits about on any other day, but then just make it interesting. I mean, I only really bought the game because I had the Spike Turnsoft name, and I fucking love Spike Turnsoft. But god damn it, it was actually really enjoyable. It got me quite addicted. It, it sort of has the sort of things I don't like. It, it has some turn-based elements, but it's the turn-based element is all it's done. So by the time you do your move and by the time the enemy does the move, it's back to your move. It has the Final Fantasy-like style pixelated graphics, which again, I don't really like, but it, it is. it has this sort of an appealing world. Everything moves in good form. And again, it's sort of like Crypto the Necro Dancer. Everything moves with just your movies. So everything that you do, everyone else does. Well, it's not really like Crypto the Necro Dancer. That used to be. But with, um, again, with Mr. Cosa, you move, everything else moves. And you can't go backwards. You can only go forwards because if you go backwards, you die. And if you go forwards, you most likely die. And it has this sort of interesting thing where, like, you don't have to face the final boss as soon as the final boss comes. You can, of course, decide to fuck off and wait until you level up. So... It, there is strategy. This is a good traditional JRPG, despite the fact it is basically a remake of a not traditional JRPG from the 90s or whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about, to be honest. Number 8. Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Well, hands up who saw this game coming onto the list. I mean, it's fucking Digimon. I, I, I love Digimon, and I love this game. And maybe I only like this game because it has Digimon. If it wasn't Digimon, I probably wouldn't give two shits about it. But it's fucking Digimon. Is there really anything else to say? Well, yes, it, it is actually quite an enjoyable game. It, it, a lot of people can say that it's, it's very comparable to Pokemon because it's a sort of monster hunting catching game, but it, it isn't. It isn't really Pokemon. I mean, instead of actually capturing the Digimon there and then, you have to scan them and you have to scan them enough for you to actually um, get a Digi Egg and then actually catch the Digi Egg to get the Digimon. And um, there is a story as well. There's a story where you are a, um, a kid who uh, ends up getting pretty much... Um, into a coma, but you're not in a coma, you have a digital form, which somehow, it's, uh, I, I'm making a mess of this, aren't I? But, um, it, 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 I mean, yeah, it's fucking Digimon. If you love Digimon, you're gonna f probably like this. It is just, ah, Digimon. Number seven, Zero Time Dilemma. I'm not a big fan of the Zero Escape franchise. It's not, I say I don't like it. I mean, I did play Virtual Last World, and it is a good game, but it, it's sort of that thing where, uh, I'm not as big fan of it as I am with Danganronpa, but Zero Times the Dilemma was spot on with what I wanted with um, this sort of game. It, it, it's sort of the story and the and the story driven, but also with puzzles and 
the thing, my big issue with Virtual Master Ward was the puzzles felt like it was like they were too complicated. Like you gotta do everything. It's like ah, oh, you gotta have, write down ah, well, you gotta do all this and you gotta learn no how this and everything, no this and that. With Zero Times Dilemma, you you get you're in a room and everything's there for you. And a lot of people could say that's the same with Virtual Master Ward, but I'm a bit stupid, so you know. No, Zero Times Dilemma, everything is in the is in the room and you use everything in there to try and get you out of the room. And of course, your choices do matter in the story. You can do one thing and it leads to one ending and you can do another thing and that leads to another ending. And yeah, it, it is short. I actually finished it quite quickly. But yeah, it gave me everything I wanted. Satisfactory. Number six. This is The Police. Usually, before I go shaking my tits for the press, is not a line I expect from a video game to start up with. But this is The Police sets the tone so perfectly with that line. This sort of very gritty, comic book-esque style theme and tone. Where you as the um, chief officer is, is getting ready for, to retire, but you know that everything's shit. But you can't really do anything. And uh, even the game itself feels like that. You, you basically, you don't, you don't get into the action. You're managing the officers who's going into the, into the action. And there are some cases where um, you have to decide whether you do something for the mayor or do you den def deny the mayor so so for example there could be a protest for the lgbt and you could decide to sort of um put, vi use violence on the uh, for, on the protest because the mayor wants you to and if you do that then he then you get support from the mayor but you get into trouble with everyone else and if you don't do that then the people like you a bit more but the mayor doesn't and that could also risk a few further things so it's all this planning and it says it's just everything's gone to shit. But then again, that's what happens when you're a police officer, I guess. Number five, Overwatch. Once upon a time, there was a game called Team Fortress 2, and it was actually magnificent. But uh, because of a lack of interesting updates, a lot of people migrated into the unknown deserts, hoping that one day they would turn to see Team Fortress 2 in its former glory. But suddenly there was a light in the distance, and this was an unusual thing for these Team Fortress 2 players and other people who were somehow in the desert. Could it be? Yes, it was something that was new, bringing the spirit of Team Fortress 2 towards it, and it was glorious, and it was named Battleborn. Three weeks later, Overwatch came out and did everything absolutely better. That's pretty much all I gotta say. Except, if you main D.Va, you are a bastard. Oh yeah, and one of the characters is gay. I, I don't remember who it is though. Number four, Salt and Sanctuary. How the fuck did I spend 40 hours on this game? That's something I ask myself sometimes. How the fuck did I spend 40 hours on Salt and Sanctuary, which basically is an unapologetic Dark Souls clone, but at the same time it isn't. It's it's a Dark Souls platformer in 2D, and I. I I guess the reason really is because it is that addicting. I can understand why people like Dark Souls from this game. There is so much to it that you want to finish that game because you know that you've overcome a challenge. And it's, it's the same with Sultan's Sanctuary. It, everything is... Every, you get everything there. You get all the monsters. You got all the weapon upgrades. And you get the, the hard bosses which all have a special weakness. Um, I mean... All of them feel fair. It still feels that there's a fairness in it, except for one boss, which can, which one boss, which can fuck off if it's one hit kills every constant fucking move it does. It, it's just so. I, I'm trying to find a way to explain it. Salt and Sanctuary is sort of it. It it knows what it is, and it's it's not apologising for it. And it's it's a brilliant game. I'm 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 surprised I played so much of it though. I still constantly ask myself why I put 40 hours into it. Number. Free. Final Fantasy 15. Well, shit, I never thought I'd ever say I really love a Final Fantasy game. And here's the thing, this is not the game that was worth the 10 year wait, but it never was going to be that game. It's not going to be the game that will overtake Final Fantasy 7 in being the best game of the Final Fantasy franchise according to the Final Fantasy fans, but it's never wanted to be. But as someone who is not a Final Fantasy fan, originally this game was quite low on the list. I, I was I was even considering it was going to just be an honourable mention. But I kept playing and I started to fall in love with everything, especially the four main characters. The four main characters are just, they feel human to an extent and yeah, 
it, it, it just sort of everything else started to sort of sort of work. The, the battle system originally I, I felt was a bit too slow for my liking, but then I started getting really into it with getting the right weapons to become more quicker. The whole, the final, the boss, the final, the the bad guy, the final bad guy is a guy is a villain that I absolutely love, but at the same time I was okay with kicking his fucking ass, and. It is a fucking beautiful game. Even if it's not as open world as people wanted to be, and even if I didn't, I wasn't given free roaming of the car, which kind of disappointed me. It is a fantastic fucking game. Better than Final Fantasy XIII, and I know that's gonna piss off someone. I don't give a shit. Number two, Track Mania Turbo. This game was surprisingly high on this list. I'm surprised, but there was two main reasons why. The first reason is the multiplayer is fucking amazing. You can have 100 car drivers and 100 players in the same track, and you don't have to worry about crashing into any of them because all of which should, because this game plays like a, the single player mode, but with just you you can still try and beat everyone else's um, time. So you're constantly trying to build build up to try and get from like. 69th place to 12th or something like that and then you see people getting faster than you it's like oh I gotta get faster than them and sometimes you see the, one of the ghost cards in front of you and your mind goes you gotta probably take that motherfucker and when you do it feels amazing and the second reason why is the customization there is you get so much freedom in the customize customization of your tracks you can I mean, it, 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 yeah, it's limited, but with it's, it uses its limitations to make to its uh, potential to the point where you can make these amazingly strange and wonderful and crazy racing tracks just from what you get. It probably has better better racetrack creations than mod race, bon, mod nation races, in my view, and that that's that surprises me a little. Number one. Mighty number nine. Mighty number nine, in my view, is the underdog story. And I'm fucking kidding, of course, because that game was a piece of fucking shit. It's a zoo. Yeah, it's 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 a zoo. I I when I when I make these lists, I always think about the game that is constantly in my mind. And after I played Abzu, which was a very short little game, it stayed with me for so long that I couldn't not put out number one. And there's a reason why this is essentially my favorite game of the year. I mean, first of all, it's in water, and I fucking love water. I fucking love swimming. So that, that's like 10 points straight away. It's also one of those games where you it goes at your own pace. I mean, the, the story is quite short, but you don't have to go rushing through it. You can, if you want, stay in certain areas and just explore. And God damn it, you should fucking explore because it is a beautiful, amazingly beautiful little game. And... Uh, I try to think of the best way to describe this game, and the best way I feel like I can is playing through an interactive Fantasia sequence. Because holy shit, the music, the the the, the look, the the feet, the swimming, the swimming. What isn't like normal swimming? I mean, this isn't a swimming simulator, but it's everything is a. It, it feels everything is made like you're watching a Fantasia sequence, and yet you're playing with it. Everything is. I mean, even even there's a story there, but you, but you you're given the choice to explore that story, and just go play it. If you love if you love Journey, to fucking play Abzu. And it, uh, in the end, I don't I don't care if people don't like that. This is the best game of the year, according to me, and I am the ninth most trustworthy person. Probably.